In this work, one of the things we can be absolutely certain of is there is no advance, there is no progress, there is no moving forward without being able to observe evil emotions. If you can't observe evil emotions, you're not going anywhere in this work. It's because if you have a car and someone has punched holes or the, or the gas tank is rotted out and all the gas leaks out, you're not going anywhere in that car. You can go and put gas in the car and put gas in the car and put gas in the car, but it's all going to run out the holes in the gas tank. So you might get it started, but you won't get it far. You won't even be able to get it to the gas station to get more gas as a rule. And so this is, this is why observing evil emotions is so important, because they're all useless. They are all toxic. Now, this is a very difficult thing for us because we love our negative emotions. We love them so much that when someone comes and says they're all toxic, they're all useless, we, we object to that. What do you mean they're all useless? I have a couple of negative emotions that have kept me very safe. I have negative emotions that have protected me. Fear has protected me. Suspicion has protected me. We have a lot of negative emotions that we guard jealously that we don't want. Anger, rage, well, that's protected me. I didn't have to feel hurt. I felt angry instead. Those things are negative emotions that are like holes in the gas tank. And all of our force, all of our fuel is leaking out there, but we're protecting those holes. Someone comes along and says, well, we need to plug these holes. No, not those holes. Those holes I need. Well, okay. I'm not going to, I'm not going to take anything away from you. You have to give it freely. And if you can't see, if you can't, if you can't get to the point where you can see that you need to give some of these things freely, well, then you need to get to that point. They're all useless. They're all toxic. The bottom line on all of them is violence and self-worship. Every single negative emotion finally funnels down to violence and self-worship. It's all about self-worship. I'm protecting myself. I'm being safe. I'm being not, I'm not being hurt. I me. I mean, it's all about me. It's all self-worship and it all is violence because the violence is directed at anything that is assaulting this self. So those two things are what all negative emotions are about. The emotional center can't really conduct work influences when it's dominated by evil emotions. How can, how can the emotional center possibly conduct work influences, higher influences, when it's dominated by evil emotions. It's just constantly putting out fires. It's constantly trying to plug leaks. It, it, there's nothing it can do. So it can't, can, you can, it, if, if you go to the gas station and you put the, the, the nozzle in your, in your spout, you know, and you, and you pump gas, you can pump gas all day long. If, you, if the whole bottom of your gas tank's gone, it just all runs down the drain. You can do that all day long. It doesn't get you anywhere. This is, this is why it's so important to, first of all, begin to see that, you know, all right, so here's the influence of the work, the gas. But we're pumping it into a gas tank that's got no bottom, or that's like a sieve on the bottom. So no gas stays in there. So how can then the, the work conduct the gas to the carburetor or the fuel injection system so that it can make the car go? Well, it can't. It can't because it can't get any fuel there. So it can't get the influences there because it doesn't get the influence because the influence is running out through the sieve that, is, that are negative emotions. Okay, we've got that? Good. Here's what to do. Oh, he's giving us a task. Oh, let's write this down. And, and, and that's, that's, that's okay. You can write this down and this is a task. Here's what I want you to do. I want you to make lists of negative emotions. Actually make lists of them. Self-pity and all of its different, oh, look at, oh, isn't self-pity a wonderful? Mm -hmm. Look at all of the different <laughs> manifestations of self-pity. We have so many manifestations of self-pity. Isn't it awful how they treat me? Isn't it awful? I, all I've done for these people, and this is what I get in return. Surely, they said thank you, yes, but don't you think I deserve a little more than that? We, we go on and on and on about these things. And it's all about self-pity. Resentment is another one. Because if you got self-pity, you're going to have resentment, aren't you? Amen. <laughs> <laughs> oh, amen. If you've got self-pity, you're going to have resentment. Depression. Um, feeling badly treated. This is another one. We feel badly treated. It's like, oh, 
we develop these attitudes and we don't even know it. We just walk around with this attitude of how badly treated we are, how misunderstood we are, how, how we don't get what we deserve, all of that. And you'll notice that all of these things kind of tie together. They're all linked together by a common theme. And the common theme, of course, is self-worship and self-love, but still there. Uh, hatred in all of its different manifestations. I don't like that person. Just another way of saying you hate the person. I don't like this. Just another way of saying you hate something. But we don't see that because we have it all justified. Self-satisfaction. Well, I'm fine the way I am. These are the people who need to change. I'm really not so bad. I mean, I'm a pretty good guy. Really, I'm pretty generous. I'm this and that. And, we, and all of these lovely pictures of ourselves, of course, prevent us from ever seeing the truth about ourselves. You know what's really funny is nobody, we're the only ones who don't know what we're like. Everybody else knows. Everybody else knows exactly what we're like. We're the only ones who are in the dark. Huh? What? I'm not like that. But everybody else knows. And they accept it. Oh, sometimes it's tiresome. Sometimes it's tedious. Sometimes it's like, oh, geez, here they go again. But they, we, we never know it. We never know it. We just go on thinking, well, we're fine. They're the ones who are screwed up. So that's self-satisfaction. That's one that needs to be listed. Contempt of others. Oh, this is a beauty. Contempt of others. I'm better than them. I know more. I do more. I work harder. I'm smarter. I read better. I remember more. I know the work better. I'm just better than them. I'm better looking, I'm taller, I'm thinner, I'm handsomer, I'm prettier, I'm not so vain, I'm not as proud, I'm not as... All of these things, all of these things that, we, that lead us to contempt of others. They aren't working hard enough. They aren't working as hard as we're working, so we're, we feel contempt toward them. Feeling meritorious. And this is the most unclean of all. We don't see it that way, but this is the most unclean of all. When we feel meritoriousness, oh, well, I've done a good job. Oh, I'm really good. Oh, I've done this. I've done that. Well, I've done all these things. Well, I'm, oh, I'm a good person. That is the most unclean of all. That is why Jesus really railed on the scribes and the Pharisees about that. Because it's Pharisaism. It's unclean. It's very, very destructive. The emotional center must be purified. Pure and simple. The emotional center cannot work defiled by evil emotions. It is overwhelmed, it is overburdened by them, and it's sluggish, and it cannot work properly until it's been purified. So the emotional center has to be purified. Use what you've observed in others and in yourself to develop inner taste. So we, are, we, we all are very good about observing negative emotions in others. We're all excellent at that. The next step, now that you've done that, now that you're an expert observing negative emotions and other making lists of negative emotions in other people, now that you know all their negative emotions and you can list them all, now apply all of that list to yourself because everything you've seen there is in you or else you would have not seen it there. Okay, once you've done that, you've got this list of negative emotions that you observed in them, then you start to see it in yourself. And then start to develop this inner taste for these negative emotions. See that, remember I said like the zoo, they're like elephants. We see the big ones, you know, or we can, we, we can smell when we're near the monkey's house, you know, the monkey cage, or we can tell when we're at, so, at the, the bird house because of all the noise. You see what I mean? So we develop this kind of inner taste, this sense of knowing emotionally what's going on, what kind of negative emotions we're really in now, the ones that are big, Bold, strong taste. We don't have much trouble with those. But the subtle tastes, those are the ones we need to develop more inner taste with. Now, inner taste is really using this sense organ that is turned inward instead of outward. It's being able to observe yourself instead of observe outside of yourself. And that's something that needs to be developed. This inner taste is something that has to be developed. People enjoy negative states and the wonderful, lovely, delicious tastes of them. You have to see this about yourself. If you cannot see how you savor and suck on negative states, like lollipops, like all-day suckers, like sugar daddies, like Tootsie Roll Pops, if you can't see that, you haven't been, you haven't been observing yourself. You haven't been working, and it's time to get started. Begin to taste them, 
recognize them by inner taste, tear them away from self-justifying. You've got to tear them away from self-justifying. Self-justifying tries to protect them and hide them. You've got to pull them away from self-justifying. You've got to rip them away from self-justifying and see them for what they actually are. People have wonderful pictures of themselves, imagining that they're amiable and tolerant, kind and forgiving, and they're not. We are not. You are not. Start there. Find how you are not. I'm not interested in you telling me how amiable and generous and kind and forgiving you are. I'm not the least bit interested in that. What I want to hear is what you found that isn't that. Because that's the only thing that's going to make, help you make progress. What good is it? You got a gas tank and it's got 400 holes in it. What good is it to find the places that don't have holes? Oh, look at this. This is perfect. This is sound. What are you talking about? What good is that? It's no good at all. But, but, but you're trying to make me find all the holes. Yes, that's right. So that you can patch them and stop the leaks. That's right. That's right. That's what I'm trying to do. But, but, see, you're identified with the holes. There's a reason for that, but we won't go into that. But you're identified with the holes. You're not, and so somebody comes along and they say, well, you have to get rid of these. No! No! That's not so bad. Yeah, it is. Or we have these pictures that there are no holes. Hey, gas is running down the street, you know, but we don't care. There are no holes. It must be somebody else's gas tank leaking. It's not mine. Well, how come your car won't start? Oh, it's a dead battery or something. You know, something else. Somebody stole the battery while I slept. It's always something. Underneath all of these pictures are inner talking, thinking we can do, things like that. We've got to face ourselves more sincerely. That's it. We have got to face ourselves more sincerely. This is always a task for us, to always face ourselves more sincerely, to always look more genuinely at ourselves, to always brace ourselves and boldly go in and take a clean, clear look in the, in the, in the clear light of the work and what the work teaches us how to observe what we actually are, always. Ospensky said, in the face of great crisis, people aren't negative as a rule. It's the small things in life call forth negative states. We forget that people are machines, and we don't realize that we are. Think about it. The big things in life, people don't get, they get very calm. It's the little things. <laughs> it's like, it was like last week, Patty was, <laughs> Patty, we talked about Patty and James. James had poison oak. <laughs> She blew a gasket because James had poison oak. Rex said, just calm down. Like, poison oak is not a bad thing. Now, if James came home and his arm was gone and blood was squirting out, I guarantee you she wouldn't go, Wah! call Rex. Oh, have you seen James? Blood squirting everywhere. She would take him directly. She would have presence of mind. And she okay, this is a life-threatening situation. She'd call 911. She'd race him to wherever she had to race him. She'd do whatever she had to do. But she wouldn't deal with it with all the negative emotions. Because there's no time for that then, is there? There's no time for negative emotions. There's just time for action, and we know it. But when we have time for negative emotions, ooh, let's have a little feast here. Oh, look at James has poison oak. So we feast on the negative emotions for a while. Because it's not life-threatening. He's not going to die. The arm's gone. Uh-oh. We better do something. So that was Ospensky's point. Without work, men memory, which is built through uncritical self-observation. This battle is absolutely hopeless. You got to have work memory, people. If you can't remember your last negative, if you don't know your negative patterns, if you can't make a list of your negative patterns, forget it. You're not going anywhere. You're not going to win this battle. You've got to know the enemy. And the enemy is you and your negative states that you're protecting, that you're loving, that you're savoring. And we need direct realizations, not theory. We're big on theory. We need direct realizations. You've got to actually see it. Not just say, oh yes, I, I know I'm, I know I'm uh, really not as generous as I thought I was, and nobody really is. See, that's theory. Nobody really is. Well, that's true, I do get angry, but anyone would get angry in that situation. That's all theory. Direct realization is, there's no question about it. Yes, I am stingy when it comes to this. Yes, I get angry when this happens. I react like a machine because I am a machine. When you see yourself as a machine, it's much easier to see other people as machines. When you see other people as machines and yourself as machines, the reactions then, you're standing outside of yourself. You're looking at the machines now. 
There's something that's not a machine that's observing the machines. And you have some separation, some non-identification, some distance. The negative emotions don't cling to you. Like those little stickers when you walk. You go for a walk out in the woods or someplace, and then your socks and your, and your pant legs are covered with all those nasty little sticker things, you know, that stick to you and have to go. And it takes forever to scrape them all off or pick them all up. It's like that. Negative emotions are like that. They stick to you if you don't get outside of them. Get outside of the machine, actually. In moments of self-remembering, something is dis is detached. It's outside from the machine, giving the taste of real I, the self that one should remember. Real I is the self that one should remember. You don't need to be remembering the machine. You need to be remembering the self outside the machine. Remember that self. Get into that self. Get your identity in that self and look at the machine and observe the machine. That's what we need to be doing. Negative emotions are part of our dirty machine. The dirtiest part is the negative part of emotional center, which, been, which has been acquired by imitation. Where did we learn negative emotions? From our parents, from people, in, from peers, from people in school. We learned negative emotions from everyone. Because this world is a world of people going around expressing negative emotion in one form or another. We have entire continents, millions of people who love certain kinds of negative emotions. We have cultures that specialize in this kind of negative emotion. We have another culture that, ex that specializes in this kind of negative emotion. Think about it. Look at it. The whole planet is a cornucopia of negative emotions. We have all kinds of places where we can learn and gather negative emotions and imitate them. Negative states drain force from us. Look what happens when you genuinely try to separate, not for merit, not so that you can get out of boy, good boy, not so that you can go, oh, look at me, oh, I've separated, so that you genuinely, for personal work purposes, separate from negative emotions. Look what happens. What does happen? You feel a shock, as if you've suddenly escaped from something evil, something you didn't even really know was evil. But you got away from it. You, oh, I got away from it. And that's a good thing. Negative states make you weak and exacerbate illness. If you're sick, negative states don't help. Sarah was, Sarah's sick. I said, Sarah, you, you get, are you sick? She said, yeah, I've been sick for about a month. I said, bad immune system, low immune system. She goes, yeah, mm, been eating junk and, and a lot of stress. And see, stress really is negative emotions. Eating junk, negative emotions. It's all connected to negative emotions. Well, I really enjoy talking about people at school. You know, I really enjoy bad mouth and this. Well, fine. You know, well, I get all these fever blisters and everything all around my mouth, but all around my mouth and my tongue and all this. Well, why is that? Well, because I'm bad mouthing people, so I end up with a bad mouth from it. Oh, how could? Oh, he's just making that up. No, I'm not just making that up. You are. Your subconscious mind can't take a joke. The machine can't take a joke. There are no jokes to the machine. Everything's serious. It's taking orders. It's programmed. You badmouth somebody, you get a bad mouth. How does that manifest? Well, rotten teeth, cold sores, blisters, you know, ulcers, uh, bad breath. Think about it. Think it through. Not so difficult. Apply it to yourself. Oh, that's a little more difficult. Why don't you shut up? <laughs> See, here's the deal. Negative states are toxic because they make bad chemistry in us. You know that we're, we're chemical factories. We're, we're, we're factories. We're con the body, take a look at the body. It's incredible. It's constantly, you look at the stuff we eat, and then that turns it into this. It turns it into flesh and blood and, and cells that can see and cells that can feel and cells that can grow. Look at all the things that the body can do with what we put into it. Really bizarre. You know, uh, impressions, water, food, and it makes all of this, air, and it makes all of this. It's incredible. We thought we thought photosynthesis was cool. You know, plants do that. They take sunlight and, and air and water and that's and they make it this. But look at what we do. We've built this, with the same kind of stuff. So the thing is, is that we're chemical factories. But negative impressions are producing bad chemistry. Negative emotions are producing bad chemistry in us, and that bad chemistry reacts by doing bad things in the body. You get sick. 
And if you're not getting sick from it, then whatever your weak area is, it attacks that weak area. It goes to the lowest place, and then it collects there, and then it eats away. That's what negative emotions do. Every psychological event that's identified with consumes energy. In a state of self-remembering, energy is created and conserved for further use. Negative emotions consume energy. All the gas just runs out of the tank. But in a state of self-remembering, the gas goes somewhere else, and it's saved so that it can be done, used for something later. That's what we want. All energy mechanically used is consumed. Therefore, if all energy that is, that, me that is mechanically used is consumed, then it makes sense to live more consciously, right? Within ourselves and in our relationship to other people and in our general relationship to life, to live more consciously to be more conscious about everything. How annoying is it to be conscious? I mean, it's pretty annoying. To be conscious about what I eat, I have to be conscious about what I say, I have to be conscious about what I want, I have to be conscious about what I think, I have to be conscious about what I feel, I have to be conscious about how I sit, I have to be conscious about the... Like, why don't I just die? Well, you are. You're working on it. You're headed that way. No need in rushing it. You're going to get there. What I'm saying is, yes, you're going to die. Yes, you're going to go the way of all flesh. Why not make your life, the quality of your life, a little bit better until you get there? Why make it worse so that you suffer until you get there? Why not make it a little bit better? Why not, incre why not increase the quality, even if you can't do anything about the quantity? Knowing these destructive effects of negative emotions, we have to try to prevent our force from going into them. Look, once you see they're making you sick, they're making your breath smell, you know, <laughs> all these things they're making you, you know, they're, all these things that they're doing, all of these things that they're stealing from you. Once you start to realize that, and of course you have to have direct realization, me telling you isn't enough. You've got to be able to see it. But once that happens, once you have that direct realization, once you know the destructive effects of negative emotions, then you want to prevent force from going into them. You want to try to separate from the negative state. Don't go with it. Don't consent to it, at least not with the mind. So if your emotions are in it, then with your mind, say, no, I'm, I don't have to go there. I don't have to go. I have the right not to be negative. I have a right not to be negative. See, how many people say that to themselves when they get negative? No, they're saying just the opposite. I have every right to be negative. They justify the negative instead of, instead of standing up for themselves, instead of being an advocate for their essential self and saying, no, I have the right not to be negative. I have the right to reach higher, to have higher possibilities, to have a better quality of life. No, they, they go with the bad eyes. They can't wait to run. Their, their feet are quick to run and shed blood and steal. Why? Because we're asleep, because we don't know the destructive effect of those things. If mind and emotions consent, identification then becomes complete, and full energy goes into the negative state. But if your mind, at least your mind doesn't consent to what the emotions are doing, then at least you're holding off some of the energy that's going into the negative state. At least you're cutting it back a little bit. At least you're trimming it some, so that you get something for yourself. Something for the work, something for your growth, something for the possibility of your evolution. Starve negative states. The more we secretly approve of them and enjoy them, the more energy they suck from us. The saddest part of us as machines is how much we enjoy our slavery. We are slaves to negative emotions. We are slaves to resentment. We are slaves to grudges. We are slaves to internal considering. We are slaves to self-pity. We are slaves to not being treated properly. We are slaves to how, how much we deserve. We are slaves to these things. Slaves. Absolutely, completely slaves. We're totally enslaved by these things. And we like it. We enjoy our slavery. Observe how you talk. What negative state or talk have you observed in yourself today? Have you criticized someone in a negative way today? How about in your mind? 
I'm not saying you told somebody else something. How about in your mind? Did you, did you get here and you, you looked around and you criticized somebody in a negative way today? If, you're, if, you're, if you can't say yes to that, you're not working. But let me just give you that right across the board. I know us well enough to know if you cannot genuinely say yes to that, you're not working. What you're doing instead is being enslaved to negative emotions. We're in this work. We're doing something extra that's not necessary to life in general. Nobody else has to do We're in this work. These other, other people don't have to do what I'm asking you to do. This isn't necessary for you to get to the grave. You don't have to do any of this to get to the grave. They all screw the lid down on your coffin, whether you do this or not. This is not necessary to life. We're doing something extra. We're doing something more. We're going the extra mile. Why is that? We want more. That's why. We want something more. What we're doing is we're learning what life won't teach us. Life isn't going to teach us this work. Life is going to teach us how to imitate what's all around us. Life is going to teach us more violence, more negativity, more of all the things that life is. This work is going to teach us something entirely different. We make the extra efforts for a reason. We want the degree. Well, why are you not going out and partying with your friends? I want the degree. I want to graduate. I don't want to spend the rest of my life at toga parties, having a good time, eating and having food fights like Animal House. I want to graduate. I want to be better. I want to be something that I'm not now. This is why we do the extra. This is what this is about. You can neutralize a negative state by seeing the same thing in yourself as you're seeing in the other person. This is simple. You can do this. You can neutralize any negative state that you're in by seeing in yourself what you're seeing in the other person. If you can genuinely do that, you will neutralize this, the negative state. It will just, it's like, it's not plus or minus, it's suddenly neutral, powerless over you. Because you haven't identified with you backed out of it. Our level of being is characterized by a number of things. Lack of unity. We're not one. We're asleep. Absence of self-remembering and negative emotions. That's it. That our, our level of being is characterized by those things. There are levels of being that don't have those things. What? Well, where are they? just above us, grab the rope right there just above you and start pulling your way up. They're up there, just above you. At any moment, at any moment, eternally, right now, that rope is hanging just above you. Grab it. Reach up and start pulling yourself up. You can get into neg better states. You can get under better influences. You can get beyond the negative emotions. A higher level of being can't be reached if negative emotions remain as they are. If you're staying in negative emotions, you're not going to be reached. You're not going to be climbing that rope. You're not going to take the lifeline because you're going to be too busy with negative emotions. You can't reach higher levels of being with negative emotions running us the way they're running us now. Study your negative states. Write them down. Remember them so when they return, you recognize them and try not to identify them. If you know your negative states, like you know other people's bad habits, like you know what to expect from other people, the bad things to expect from other people, if you know that about yourself, I promise you that when they start coming around, then you'll have plenty of work to do. At that point, at that point, as soon as you taste it, as soon as you taste it, as soon as you smell it on the wind, right then, try not to identify know what it is, remember what it is, trust your work memory. Try not to identify and see if you can escape from it. Try, try, try.